Hello, folks. This is Jeff Davis with the legendary Jeff Davis Show from Central Texas, USA. And I love my cans and archives. Peace out, baby. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You guys might want to eject that IRS tape. I can hear it. Um, there is a lot to cover. It is March 28, 2001. I want to thank the great crew. This is Access TV as we valiantly fight to wake you up out there that a corrupt, tyrannical world government hell-bent on controlling your mobility, your right to self-defense, parental rights over your children, property rights, it's all under attack, national sovereignty, you name it, the world is going into a new dark ages. We have got a lot of important news for you. Last Wednesday we aired footage from last Tuesday's House Criminal Jurisprudence Committee where three of the witnesses that testified against the Second Amendment were being lavishly paid off, according to witnesses, $400 a piece. We caught much of this on videotape. There was a whitewash in the Austin American Statesman on Saturday's edition. Then they came out in the Sunday edition of the newspaper and said, The Case for Banning Guns. That's right, the headline, The Case for Banning, The Disarming Argument. So they've been playing all their games, getting the national instant check-in to register your guns or what type or how many you have, and now they're confiscating in California. They're confiscating in Massachusetts. They're confiscating in Illinois. They're confiscating in cities like Toledo, Ohio. They have door-to-door -door gun searches that were about to go forward in Tucson, Arizona. Now many of you are saying, hey, I don't own a gun, guns are scary, I've seen them in Hollywood movies, don't want to touch them, don't want to be around them. It's an illusion being created by the media where you're afraid of guns, like there's some vicious King Cobra. Back when everyone was armed in this country, you didn't have gun violence to speak of. One or two shootings a year that got national attention. You had people that were trained and understood the Second Amendment. But America became urbanized, people moved into the cities, are scared to death of guns to where only the police, the government, and the criminals have them by and large, and you're scared to death and you're buying the lies of the media. How many of you knew that gun violence is down the last decade, massively, in the U.S.? How many of you knew that over in England where they've banned all the guns, they now have the highest crime rate in the industrialized world, as reported by the mainstream news in England? How many of you knew that they're number one now, the U.S. is number 12th on the scale of violent crime? You're hearing that England's wonderful, why they don't have any crime, why their cops don't even carry guns. Oh, they do now. They wear a black ski mask, they drive armored vehicles, they got cameras up everywhere, they thumb scan to buy and sell. Everything that we're warning you about that's about to happen here is already happening over there and it's already started here. On the plate today, Biometric Access wins deal with New York Agency from the Austin Business Journal. This is up on Infowars.com in the biometric section on the main page. And at the bottom of the story, it says HEB and Kroger's are going to put in thumb scanners. They're already in the Houston area locations. You want some food? You'll have to thumb scan. School children from Illinois to Michigan to the city of Philadelphia are having to thumb scan to get their school lunches now. You went to the Super Bowl, your face was bioscanned and saved. We're all being treated as if we're guilty until proven innocent. Later I'm going to get back into the civilian inmate labor camp program. This is from the Army's website. This is in the police state section of Infowars.com. A direct link to the Army's own website. In fact, Mike, go ahead and put that up on screen for people. Americans are now slaving in 12 concentration camps. And you're calmly sitting there in your home, feeling powerless. You do have power. Individually, many hands make light work. We'll get to that for you. We have the payments made to backers of gun bills that I already talked about that we caught on tape, the whitewash from the statesman, the disarming argument for disarming the American people and the statesman from Sunday. And we have a tax on women who own guns. Now it's an FBI number. They don't publicize it a lot. They're not proud of it because they want to disarm you, but it's their own crime statistics. 
that five times more often guns are used to frustrate crime. Every day I scan the news wires around the country. There are hundreds of cases buried in little papers and big papers about pizza delivery man shoots crook, woman who was being raped gets a gun, shoots attacker, uh, a strange boyfriend tries to kill girlfriend, she shoots him in the home. Uh, people are defending themselves. Look at who was for gun control. You can't avoid it. Adolf Hitler, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, Joseph Stalin, the first thing they do, r slaves, Julius Caesar's got quotes all over the place, slaves cannot be armed, slaves must be disarmed. They don't say, oh, that couldn't happen in America. Black people were slaves here. M many of my ancestors came here as white indentured servants. We have the Tuskegee experiment letting black men die of syphilis. We have radiological and biological testing going on all over the place. Don't you dare tell me America isn't a bad place. It's got a better history than most countries. It's the criminals that have gotten control of our constitutional republic. And I read the UN documents. They don't even hide them now. They want your guns. The UN is not happy, lovey, feely. The UN has killed more people than Adolf Hitler. From Katanga to East Timor. From Serbia to Rwanda, they are. They had a Nazi, Kirk Valtime, running them from '72 to '82, and they tried to defend him when people found out. A Gestapo officer, and the so-called liberals out there. You think big government's going to stop all these corrupt corporations, these big top twenty corporations and banks? The UN, big government works for them. That's why they want it. Big business is behind the WTO and behind the UN and behind the IMF and the World Bank and their private shareholders. That is a fact, not my opinion. That is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. You have to face this information. Now, we've got a lot of footage. Mike Hansen was down there today reporting on the Samuel Ramirez, the rapist cop who they just fired, who they're about to rehire. They're trying to attack this woman in the press and say, oh, well, she deserved it. She had the Playboy channel on. Does it matter? You shouldn't have cops just responding to burglar alarms and raping women. And they sat and watched it. It's just incredible. So I'm not against police out there. I'm against bad cops, and it sets a bad example to let bad cops stay on the force. And I've had my family abused by the police. I have an upstanding family, so I know what you're up to, at least some of you out there. And by the way, after they let you act like idiots, police, after Stan Nee from California and the CIA model lets you act like thugs, the feds are going to come here and take over the department, like they've done in three major cities, federalizing our police to stop the corruption that they train modern police agencies to engage in. They're setting you up, fools. But first, I want to go to the payoffs. Mike, do we have that tape ready? The three-quarter tape? Do we have that ready, Mike? Fantastic. We'll go to that here in a few minutes. I want to set this up for you. We're going to re-air this in the uh, 6 o'clock hour again because it's so central and it's so important. Before I tell you about the payoffs that we caught on tape that was in the Austin American Statesman front page of Metro and State. Let me close shot, guys. Front page of the Metro and State uh, this weekend payments made to backers of gun bills. Before I get to that, and the statesman's article uh, targets Texas in his war on handguns saying they should ban guns. Before we get to all of that, I want to tell you what the Texas legislature is proposing right now as we speak. As we speak, this is being proposed by the House Criminal Jurisprudence committee. The chairman is Juan Hinojosa, McAllen, Texas. We must get this guy removed from office if he votes for this. He's saying he is. Jim Dunnan, vice chairman from Waco, another disgusting wannabe slave master. Domingo Garcia, Dallas, another disgusting slave master. Ann Kitchen, our very own pride and joy, the fascist queen herself, the posing pop liberal. Then we have uh, Terry Martinez for it. Folks against it, John Shields, Robert Talton, Rick Green, Terry Keel. We need one person to switch their vote. They were going to try to vote it through last night. We stopped them. They may vote on it next Tuesday. Blow their fax machines out of the water with thousands of faxes. In fact, Juan Hinojosa's secretary, press secretary, told me they had to unplug the fax machine last Wednesday when I plugged it on the radio. 
So keep it up and show up down there on person. If you don't, this is about to happen. Get ready for this. In the press, you've heard it's about a gun show loophole. That means you can privately sell your neighbor a gun. Okay? Back before there were any rules, we had less crime. <clears throat> That's all you're hearing about in the media. Forget HB 367, forget HB 404 and HB 635. That's for confiscation. They want all your guns registered through the NICS system, and that's what happens. The type of gun you have, when you bought it, what your name is, where you live. Forget those bills for confiscation, and we'll get to that later out of the statesmen where they're openly saying they want to confiscate your guns. Forget that. You can read the stories in full at Infowars.com. We'll get that on screen for you. And forget HB 446 by Representative Glenn Lewis. Forget that. I mean, that's where you have to have your guns locked up in a gun safe where they're worthless to you, where they're absolutely useless. No, these are the bills that no one will talk about in the press, that no one will discuss, that are so dastardly, that are so evil, admittedly to kill the gun culture. The statesmen finally reported on this. They didn't mention the bills, they just said we're going to kill the gun culture, we're going to wait for gun owners to die. It says that in the statesmen. Talk about arrogance in your face. What will they be saying next? Can we throw InfoWars up, guys? Fantastic, great job. I just wanted to read these articles in the Second Amendment section for themselves. What a powerful website that Violet Nichols does. HB 193, HB 209, HB 1332. Now, they've outright banned guns in New York City, even BB guns now, and in Washington, D.C. They have the highest crime rates of the country. Can't escape that. That's fact. But those are the only places that, that have more restrictive gun laws if this passes. Hold on to your hat. They're saying they're going to pass this. These are three bills that would stop 4-8 shooting sports, Boy Scouts, Junior Olympics, Operation Orphan, and other youth shooting programs. The kids that are in these programs never shoot anybody. They're taught safety. They're taught heritage. They're taught history. It's not the Hollywood view of a gun with all the glamour. It's a tool of freedom that helped defeat Hitler. Limits firearms, long gun possession to juveniles 18 and under and creates affirmative defense to prosecution if you're with a parent. That means it's illegal, ladies and gentlemen, to be with your parents hunting or shooting. If you are with your parent, also HB 1332 makes possession of a handgun by someone under 21 against the law with no exceptions. That means our Olympic shooters are an, a are an average of 19 years of age. It's over for you. And they've done this in England and Australia. Their youth shooters have to leave the country to train for the Olympics. They had dozens of 4-8 shooting clubs and Olympic shooters at this Texas hearing. Hinojosa wouldn't even let them talk. It was Nina Butts and their nine speakers went for four hours until the media left. Then the full committee, full in the back, standing room only, full out in the hall. We didn't even hardly get to speak. I knew a committee person and got to speak. Rick Green. Because <clears throat> I had to leave. So again, outrageous. HB 193 by Representative Lon Berman, Burnham, HB 209 Representative John Longoria, and HB 1332 by Representative Helen Giddings, who was giddy. She was there, even though she's not on the committee, laughing when I talked about the camps. Mike, bring me the takeover, please, brother. I guess the machine froze up, huh? Oh, well, that's cool, but go ahead and throw the infos, uh, info wars up right now because I want folks to be able to see these articles. You guys are doing a fabulous job. All right, bring me all the tapes we're going to play today. Thank you, Mike. Mike, i got to tell you, in 30 minutes he sets up for this show. we got so many tapes. This is shoestring stuff. We're doing a great job. I took my time out. I took my money out, and I gave them all copies of my latest police state documentary film that the British thought were important enough that they bought the rights to it, and it's airing in England right now. Okay, I mean, this is a professional, real, documentary film that is getting international attention. You won't hear jack about it in the newspaper. Well, the San Antonio Express News did talk about it. You won't hear jack about it in the press here because we have a controlled media. I give these people, all of them, copies of this film. And I give it to, I give this video to Ann Kitchen from right here in Austin, who I almost ran against. And I give it to her and I say, ma'am, please soften your heart. There are concentration camps they've built. People are in them right now. I go, I know this sounds funny, but you know who I am. You know this stuff. And she starts going, <laughs> laughing. Some of the old, one old guy up there who's a former police officer wasn't laughing. He was going, 
because he, at least he's not stupid. John uh, uh, Robert Talton of Houston, he was going, well, and I was giving him documents and executive orders, and I could see him going. He was the only one taking it serious. All the rest of them, even Rick Green, who's a good guy, was kind of going, I mean, come on, these camps are real. And the viewers of this show have seen them, and you know they're real. And now they're putting people in them. And I, I'm up there giving them these, these well-produced tapes. You know, I'm there, here you go. You know, these are all for you. And the loving liberal Ann Kitchen is up there laughing. This woman isn't a liberal. I'm a real liberal. I'm for freedom. This woman knows. They are up there admitting they plan to ban guns. I mean, are you going to let them get away with this? And if you turn your guns in like people did in Nazi Germany, you're crazy. It's not just that they're doing the same things Hitler did. Now they're building camps. So I'll get to that in a few minutes. So they have these bills where if you're under 18, you won't be able to go hunting. They have these new bills where if you're under 21, you won't be able to go shooting. My father, when I was 10 years old, would take me out to Grandma's with a 22 rifle, and I was taught safety and how to never aim it at people and all of this. And no one in my family's ever shot themselves. No one's ever had a problem. When my dad grew up, he would carry a shotgun into school at a 4A school outside Dallas. He would go into a 4A school with a shotgun and ammo, and the coaches and the teachers didn't even look at it. Those women were real women. They could grab that gun with their lipstick on and start, you know, shooting clays out of the air. Guns were everywhere. We didn't have this. It's the human mind. And if you watch the news, so later they get to how they're going to kill our gun culture, how they're going to kill the Second Amendment in the Statesman Sunday. And here it is. The only image we have is Arnold Schwarzenegger shooting 100 people, natural born killers, people killing police officers, murder, death, video games like Deus Sex where you're a UN soldier that kidnaps and murders patriots, and you're the government. I actually saw the game now, played it. At the start, this, the FEMA goes, we're going to release a biological to create a crisis. Go forward, UN soldier. And this is what the kids are playing now. La just incredible games with, with, with just really juicy graphics. And, and, and the cover of the game is black helicopters attacking American cities. This is the culture. This is what they're, they're being fed on. Am I saying restrict that game? No. Am I saying restrict Hollywood? No. I'm not shocked by any of this stuff. It's not like it's, ooh, I'm, I'm square and I can't handle it. I've lived a tough life. I've done a lot of things, folks. It's not that... I know it's evil. Viacom and MTV and this culture is selling you death, telling young people to kill themselves, having death education in the schools, starting in 1990 at Columbine, which made suicide rates explode in this country. And then they pour gasoline on a fire that was once a match. They got a four-alarm fire, and they're telling us, give up your rights, give up your guns, register your guns. And now they're admitting they want to confiscate them. Women out there, you are some of the best shots around because you're more calm than men. Some of the best Olympic shooters are women. The world champion is a woman right now. Stop thinking you can't shoot a gun. The so-called liberals act like, oh, women couldn't shoot a gun. Oh, women, oh, 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 it hurts minorities to have guns. It says that in the States when playing the race card. Take a lesson. Learn about it. Get involved with these women's groups that go out and shoot. They're black, they're white, they're old, they're young, they're Democrats, they're Republicans. If they get our guns, folks, it's only the criminals and the new thug police they're hiring. Did you hear about the 75-year-old man in Los Angeles who was deaf, who did sign language, who did sign language yesterday morning to the police and they pulled him over and they thought it was a threatening gang sign from the old man. The, the cops were so droogish, like, like out of clockwork orange, they drugged the old guy out and beat him half to death. You read the emails the cops send to each other on their little pagers from D.C. and L.A. I can't wait to go out and kill me somebody today. You're not talking about gun control for them. Automatic weapons, armored personnel carriers, everything you could ever want. Everything you could ever want. Think about it. And I don't mean to rant and rave. I mean, how do I get up here and talk about concentration camps? How do I get up here and talk about foreign troops in a calm fashion? 
How do I get up here and explain to you that you've been domesticated, that slaves in 2500 B.C. in early Rome couldn't own a sword, couldn't own a knife, their knives were flat-ended? How do I get that through to you? You haven't read Caesar's Battle for Gaul, have you? Where he goes in and plays the tribes off against each other in France and Germany, gets them to turn their weapons in and then kills the men and enslaves the women. Folks, the prison population has doubled in eight years. The government brings in the drugs to create the crisis. MTV tells your kids it's cool to shoot people and all the rest of this garbage. And at the same time, that has a show, ban guns, ban guns. See, they tell you to do one thing. When you do it, they say, ooh, look what happened. Then they freak out. If you haven't done anything in your life, get down to the state capitol. They're in, let, they're in session right now. HB 193, HB 209, HB 1332. We have the numbers to the state legislature on Infowars.com. We have the names of these traitors that are trying to destroy the gun culture in Texas. We have it all there for you. I want you to understand this. It is so important. Get past your emotion that guns are bad. Shootings are way down the last 10 years. The illusion. Did you know three days before the two people died in that school shooting three and a half weeks ago, a man, a boy, a young man, 17 at that same school, ran over and killed four youths in the school parking lot with his car on purpose, ran over their bodies repeatedly in a big truck. Big truck with tires. And then a week later, they have another school shooting with a guy that wasn't even at the school, the school in the next, next down the road in the same district. Shouldn't we be asking what's happening in San Diego schools, that people are running over other children with monster trucks? You don't want to ban the cars, do you? Shouldn't we be asking what the world's going on there? Columbine, they had death education. 2020 reported laying in coffins. They wouldn't let the SWAT teams in for three hours. Eyewitnesses reported four men in black ski masks. They won't release the 12 surveillance tapes from 12 surveillance cameras of Columbine. They won't release that tape. Any of it. They released like 10 seconds of some kids stumbling over chairs. Harris and Kleibel were both shot in the back of the head. And former state senator John DeCamp on my radio show this week said he is about to file suit that, that they had a hit team in there, a SWAT team in there, killing those kids from the National Security Council. This is a serious man. They have the documents. You don't believe they do that? You don't know very much, do you? Why'd they hold the, why don't they release the tape if we're making all this up? I know it sounds too hard to believe, folks. They stage and fake everything. All right, guys, let's go to that. Uh, this is the payoff last Tuesday at the House Committee on Criminal Jurisprudence. And uh, they have these three young men get up there and speak about how, you know, turn in the guns. This is only the beginning. We're going to get your guns. White people are racist because they have guns. I'm like, come on, brother. Wake up and be my friend. I want to work with you. Stop working for slave master, please. We're all slaves, brother. Come together. And then I go out in the hall, and Jews for Preservation of Firearms, Adam Dollinger, runs in and says, Alex, they're out there getting paid $400 a piece. So I run out with a camera and catch him with the money in their hands and watch him throw out different stories. Then we'll get to the Statesman articles. Then we'll get to all these other pieces. Uh, the... Gun payoff, airport, Mike Hansen being confronted by the police, Sam uh, Ramirez, rape story, and then we've got uh, Mike Hansen's trial coming up, prison system and its impact on communities and families, uh, Mount Carmel Memorial, April 19th, and Second Amendment rally that I'm putting on the 22nd of April. And please come to that, ladies and gentlemen. That is so important. At 12 noon to 3 p.m. south side of the Capitol, the 22nd of April. Put that down on your calendar now. All right, let's go ahead and go to this tape. We'll put that back up again a little bit later. Why am I so excited? Because, ladies and gentlemen, the globalists are so arrogant, they put out their own publications bragging how they're disarming us and bragging about what they're going to do to us because they know you're busy reading NASCAR and Hustler. Oh, my goodness. All right, uh, let's go ahead and go to the payoff. We ready with that? 
And we'll be right back. This is the payoff at the Capitol last week that the state's been whitewashed. Stay with us. Stay tuned right here for more classics on this channel here, Hanson Archives. But to fund this station, I'm offering, if you send us $25, uh, we'll send you a signed copy of Bohemia Grove Cult of Conspiracy. It was forwarded by Tex Mars that just recently passed away. Also, Alex Jones has a chapter in here. And you know that's good. There's us in our younger days. But on the address that you see, send us $25 and we will send you a signed copy or give us a call at 830-672-3089 and uh, you can put it on a credit card. We'll send it right out. But that's what we need to help fund this channel, folks. So help us get all the classics uploaded to YouTube. We got hundreds and hundreds of old Alex Jones and Jeff Davis and a bunch of other patriots that we need to upload. About 25 year old tapes. So you guys were paid for your testimony? Nope. No. Nope. Well, we just saw the gentleman give you money. Doesn't matter. We travel. We travel over here. expenses, baby. I gave them traveling expenses. Travel. So you guys with the million mom marks? No. No. What were you no. Texas? Wait a minute. Who are you with this camera? In? No, he's a Not guy he, he, who has some he has a Austin TV show, show here in Austin. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's no. Right. Actually, it's no, campaign he, contributions. Yeah. Campaign contributions. Yeah, right, man, right. nobody's getting paid for nothing. Man, we we're running. What I said in there, that's what I feel well, for. Well, I mean, heart. who gave you the money? It doesn't matter. The money I've been at, I got money all Looks over. like quite a bit. I saw this gentleman giving you money. I gave him you got traveling it. expenses. All right. And, and uh, I saw you testify, sir. You, yeah. Uh, you were here with <laughs> Nina Butts, funded by George Soros, <laughs> the foreign uh, currency speculator. So this is how business is done. And who are you? I'm Alex Jones. Oh, hi, Alex. A no well, fire you know. purchaser, a seller to miners. Yep. Oh, really? Really? I didn't know I was in that business. I thought I was a radio talk show host. Yeah. But really? Oh, that's an effective deal. Yeah. So you guys are taking over the country now, right? Yeah. Nope. You are, dude. Just you as soon as dude. people are disarmed, right? Just yeah. like Hitler. Right. Jeez. So how much did he pay you? It looked like thousands to me. Yeah. It was. It was 20000 Well, I saw wads of 20s and 100s. <laughs> I had to get my camera. I was across the hall there. We're going to go buy a gun with that, man. The police told us about it. We're going to go buy a lot of guns, and we're going to come back and sell them to the NRA. Hey, we're making this show hot. We're going to right. Remember, Hitler was for gun control, guys. Hitler sure. was for gun control. Was for gun and control. if I ever catch him on my block, I'm going to shoot him. For real. <laughs> so how did the Million Mom March get in touch with you? Um, they, we're not they, even they, a part of the Oh, really? You, mom. you said the name of a group you were with. Young Texans oh, Against Gun, gun Violence, baby. Recognize. And you get paid to do it, huh? Nope. Nope. We you get didn't a just stipend. Get paid. We get a stipend from volunteering. From who? Don't from that old man? That, that man, that old man's our from best friend. Uh, campaign campaign contribution. Sure. It's people like me. Man, whatever. See, your son doesn't be just like you. <laughs> it's not my son. It's not his son. You just, you just call little kids names. That's... Ah, that's your boy, man. You don't want to lose your 4-8 shooting glove, do you? No, I don't. Not. Well, there's a bill that'll ban it where they won't be able to train you how to shoot. And that's their goal. Yep. Hello. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> my God. I like this country's gone. I'd like to tell you one thing, okay? I went to the, I went to the gun show, the last gun show I went to two months ago, and I only found one table. Sold, um, oh, I know that they wanted all registered so they can confiscate. Only one. Folks, day. we're in an emergency. We Those are. guys were like calling little kids names, called him names and stuff. They're nuts. Socialist. Yeah, I said he was my son. Ooh. And 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 and. and, and and so you guys were the 4-H shooting club. Yes, yeah, yeah, we're here for the youth. We're here, we're here for the youth. And you've been waiting all day, and they wouldn't even let anybody talk. So they had all the Nina buses up there first. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Did they call me yet? Come on, I need to interview you. I got it. I got a shot of my rear end. I saw you paying those people off, your, your guy. Paying those guys from Houston hundreds. Excuse me, excuse me. Really? 
Yeah. I have a hundred dollars. Well, I called you. I called him one day. So you're your card, lady. Really? Yeah. Who are you talking about? <laughs> what did you see? Because across the hall, I saw wads of money. I ran to get the camera, well, and I, I missed it. And I came back, and I caught him, and he hid the money. I was. She told me that the woman in we went over there, and they, he was counting them out, the money. I saw hundreds and twenties. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. I, we think he gave each guy like $400, right? Well, no, he just, all I saw was $400 that I saw him count out. Um, a lot of you guys are looking from the, from the outside in. You know, so you guys are looking in on the situation, and you guys are living it day to day. I have friends who sell guns who buy guns from people who go to the gun shows and get guns at large quantities. You know, I mean, I know all these people. I live there where all this is going on. And, I mean, you guys might think that there's already a, a they already have a, they have everything under control, but it's not. I mean, regardless of if we pass this law or not, um, I mean, things might change, but this, this right here, this bill, all three of these bills, this is just the beginning because there's bigger there's bigger threats out there and there's bigger laws that we need to focus on that are being enforced in America. But these three these three these three house bills right here, this is the, just the beginning and I'm all for it. And like I said, you guys are looking most of you guys are looking out I mean, from the outside in because I'm there. I'm there every day. I've even gone into researching. I don't even want to know where the, where these companies are located at none of that. But well, then what makes you think that they're selling to these drugs? Because that's, that's only who else is going to get them. They don't have a factory in the hood where where they're making guns. You don't think some of those guns might be stolen? They're not, man. How 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 can where are you going to get 200 stolen guns from? Uh, from 200 houses, maybe or 10 houses. Maybe. And see, nobody nobody says all right. Nobody. Thank you. Picture. So, uh, I'm sorry, this, just wanted to clarify. I think what I'm hearing you saying that it, at least one source of these guns are on the street is the gun show. Yes. Thank you. That's a very good one. First question I'd like to ask is, do we have an epidemic of gun violence because the proponents of the legislation, the ladies, the very well-intended and sincere testimony from the William Ryan March members and others, would lead to believe we have an epidemic of gun violence. That is not the case. Texas and the United States are safer than they have ever been. I won't go into detail, but if you look at the clipping file here that has uh, information from the National Center for Health Statistics and the Center for Disease Control, um, U.S. gun deaths at lowest since mid-60s, you'll see that we do not have an epidemic of gun violence, and we may be in a situation where we have a solution seeking a problem. I would also like to tell you that we've heard of the incidents of Columbine and other schoolyard shootings, but in the last 12 months, more kids in high school have died in football accidents than have died in firearm fatalities. And football has nothing to do with constitutional rights or access to football. We hear about the gun show loophole, and we use, we use that term because it has a ring to it, the gun show loophole. It conjures up images of uh, of bad and devious and deceitful activity. But what we're really talking about is the secondary seller loophole. We don't say secondary seller loophole because then we broaden our, our solution to include people like you and me who may use the internet or as we mentioned before, uh, the newspaper articles. But the mission of the proponents of this legislation is to close the secondary seller loophole. Now, you can find out a lot about things if you go to the websites of the folks who are those kind of issues. And I have uh, information from the website, from the Million Mile March website, and their policy, stated policy, is to that every gun sale, including those by unlicensed gun owners, must be processed by a licensed gun dealer as if it were a sale by the dealer. Every gun buyer must submit to a thorough background check. They mention on their website, this loophole is actually much broader than name implies, but it calls it a the gun show loophole because it applies to every gun sale by a private gun owner, regardless of what the sale takes place. And they advocate closing the secondary seller loophole. This is off of their website if you'd like to get a copy of that. Uh, you can go to the Violence Policy Center website. 
the mayor advocates of home gun confiscation, but right now they espouse that we need to do close the gun show and the secondary seller loophole. Uh, you can go to the handgun controls website and they say handgun control advocates closing this major loophole by requiring a background check on all handgun sales including those by individuals that is really the issue here and i hate to you know make the old uh, camel uh, you know tin on the or nose on the tin or talking hard but that is really the goal the real goal is to eliminate the private transaction of all firearms regardless of the venue and that raises where my real concern on um, uh, this uh, legislation uh, well, that frankly is not a little When all transactions are through a NICS system and a record is made, that is the same thing as registration. Now, I know I sound like maybe the go-to guy for the black helicopter crowd here when I say that, but clearly registration in almost every jurisdiction where it has been enacted has resulted in, to some degree, confiscation. Even in local jurisdictions in the United States and California today, they are confiscating certain types of semi-automatic firearms. They're doing the same thing in Massachusetts. They've done it in Australia. They've done it in Great Britain. They've done it in the UK. Registration to me is something the citizens should fear. And if we make a transaction record of every sale, ultimately we have registration. I'm skipping some of the other things here that have already been covered. I would like to talk about the next check downtime. Uh, I have a uh, handout here a letter that was written by Bill Carter. Uh, he is a gun uh, show, a gun store owner in the Houston area. He has five, uh, I think, five gun stores in the Houston area. And, and you might say that Mr. Bill Carter would have a vested financial interest in this bill passing because it would eliminate his competition theoretically. But Mr. Carter recognizes that you know, we all hang together and we all hang separately. But he wrote a letter, there's a copy of the letter here to Senator Warren Hatch, talking about the downtime in the NICS system. And behind that letter, that two-page letter, you will find a log of the days that NICS was down. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say the crew, uh, Max and Mike Hansen and others, are doing a fabulous job here with the Access TV equipment. Again, it is the 28th of March, 2001, and you saw the payoff. And then some of the testimony that was Senator um, Patterson explaining to you they are confiscating guns across the country after states put registration in. And that's what the instant background check is. That's the control. That's what's developing. People that had hunting rifles are being raided in Los Angeles for having them even in gun safes. They're being arrested for legal guns. They're saying, well, you might have been planning to sell them. We didn't have any intel on that. But we're just going to go ahead and arrest you anyways. Meanwhile, the police are arming to the teeth. The military is training with the police and now running real checkpoints that you've seen video of, and they're building camps. Now, I want to get to the Austin American Statesman right now. This is from Saturday's edition. Payments made to... Yeah, good job. Thanks. I was behind the curve. My mistake. Payments made to backers of gun bills. Front page, Metro and State. Let me go ahead. No teleprompters here. Let me read this to you. <coughs> Payments made to backers of gun bills. Questions arise over cash given to three witnesses who support gun show background checks. Now, I didn't call the statesman. They called me. And uh, Claudia Grissels and Juan uh, Elizondo, I think they're good folks, but they're ignorant. Listen to this story. I know you watch, too. I don't mean to be mean. It's just a fact. Proponents of gun owners' rights asked lawmakers Friday to investigate cash payments made to three Houston men who appeared before a House committee this week to support bills that would require instant background checks at gun shows. Now, I begged you to tell them that those men were there not just for that, but they were there to ban people under 18 going hunting or shooting with their parents. They were there to lock your guns up in a safe at your house so they're worthless. They were there and they said that we want guns banned, that we want more. This is just the beginning. I told you, Juan... And Claudia, I knew how you'd write this story. I told you how you'd write it. I said you'd do that, and you did it. Dave Smith, president of Houston-based Texans for Gun Safety, a known front that is funded by Hanga Control Incorporated, said he gave the three members of Young Texans Against Gun Violence, Nina Butts' group is Texans Against Gun Violence, about 300 each to cover their expenses and lost wages for the trip. All three men, however, said they are currently unemployed. So they can't get their lies straight. That's lie number four right there. Um, 
it was reimbursement for their jobs, but they're unemployed. Oterius Kelly, 20, one of the witnesses said it is ridiculous that someone would raise concerns about their testimony. It's against my morals, Kelly said. An admitted gang member, by the way, uh, in, the San, uh, in the Houston Chronicle. There's another story about this in there. Another witness agreed. The money that was given to us was not to change our testimony, said Bruce Brown, 18, who did not speak to the committee, but submitted a witness form that showed he supported the bills. Smith, who gave the men the cash just outside the committee hearing room, said Young Texans Against Gun Violence is an arm of his group. The subsidiary group receives donations from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development and the Alliance for Justice. If you're Catholic, a lot of good Catholics out there, you better let them know you're sick of your money going to this. Remember, Hitler was for gun control. Those groups encourage young people to get experience in the political process, Smith said. <laughs> yeah, right. Reimbursing witnesses for travel expenses is not unusual, said Susie Woodford of Common Cause Texas, a group that monitors government ethics. But she said other witnesses using cash and paying for witnesses, time raises ethical questions. It's totally undermines the witness's credibility, Woodford said. I got here. I said, how will this look? And then I'm going to cut to the article, not out of the paper. Not the paper article, but the Internet article because it's easier to read. I can never get it on that small. Here we go. It says, complaints about the payments began circulating after Austin-based talk show host Alex Jones, who was at the House Criminal Jurisprudence Committee meeting Tuesday aired videotaped interviews with Smith and the young men. They told Jones the money was reimbursement, stipends, and campaign contributions. So, three different stories. It, it's like the famous scene in a movie. Where are you guys going? Or where, what are you doing? Going to see my mother? Uh, going to get something to eat? Uh, going to the moon? It's just making it up. So... I heard videotape interviews with Smith and the young men. They told Jones that the money was reimbursement, stipends, and campaign contributions. Chris Stark, head of Gun Owners Alliance, has asked his thousands of members to seek a House investigation of the payments and to have the hearing disregarded. Smith said the complaints are being raised because the young men are minorities. Two are black, one is Hispanic. Um, so... Here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, they were all three black, but just to make it look like we're offending all the groups, throw in Hispanics. You saw the video. Folks, this is so classic. I'm in there with Jews for the Preservation of Firearms. I'm in there with 4-H shooting clubs, Orientals, Hispanics, whites, Eskimos. I mean, you name it, folks. Literally, in there, fighting for the Second Amendment, for heritage, for everything. They won't even tell you what the bills are in the paper. I walk out and watch bribery going on, and... Uh, Dave Smith, listen to this, Smith said complaints are being raised because the young men are minorities. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jones, a strong supporter of gun owners' rights, said Smith was trying to cover up his dirty activities by making accusations of racism. Well, I said covering up what looks like dirty activities, misquote here. He's sitting here caught on tape throwing out different stories and giving out money, said Jones, who mentioned the payments during his testimony against the proposal to require background checks at gun shows. How dare he try to divert attention by saying I'm a racist. I'd be upset if there were white guys, Eskimos, or blue Russians. I got sarcastic there. Committee members, but see, you're not thinking about them going after your guns now, are you? You're distracted by this race card, by this loving liberal, <laughs> this, you know, this... This stealth lobbyist, <laughs> here's your cash. We got to speak for four hours while 200 people sign up to speak and didn't get to talk. <laughs> Nine of us, isn't this great how we stage things? Committee members Rick Green, R. Dripping Springs, and Juan Hinojosa McAllen said they were uneasy about taking Jones seriously because of other inflammatory comments he has made. Oh, like the video I gave you of the concentration camps, the Senate hearings, former congressman, Henry B. Gonzalez admitting we're in deep trouble before he died. You mean that? You mean that? Hinojosa, the chairman of the committee, said that although he didn't know details about the payments, he is not concerned that the witnesses are compensated for testifying. Hinojosa said lobbyists are compensated for their work to influence policy on behalf of other interests. Maybe these kids were paid for their travel, but I don't see anything improper about it, Hinojosa said. It is part of the process. It is part of open government. State law requires people who are paid more than 1000 in three months or who spend more than 50, uh, 500 a quarter trying to influence legislation or agency action to register as lobbyists. So you broke the state election laws, bud. You're not a lobbyist. We checked.
Smith said not reimbursing witnesses for lost wages would mean average Texans would be left out of legislative debates. And he said cash made sense. If they are driving back to Houston and have problems, they need cash, he said. If it's not a good idea to do it on TV, I guess, he added. Two of the members, Glenn Lambert, 19, and Kelly, are board members of Young Texans Against Gun Violence, a federal front group. Kelly testified that he knows people who have purchased guns at gun shows specifically to resell in lower-income minority neighborhood. Again, the race card, the race card. Um, I mean, it's sick. By the way, Fox calls me, ABC calls me, wants the tapes. So I drive over this weekend, bring them the original tapes, let them make dubs. They never air the pieces. Footage of bribes, they don't care. Good reporters called, wanting the information, it got killed from on high. So I guess I should thank um, Juan Elizondo and Claudia Grisselles, Grisselles, to, uh for uh, doing this. I guess I should thank you. Thank you for at least writing a whitewash. But what you didn't hear, what you didn't know, was in these articles that HB 193 and HB 209 and HB 3032 will outlaw people under 21 being able to touch a handgun, even with their parents at the range, learning gun safety. That's it for the Olympics. HB 209 HB 193 will outlaw touching guns if you're under 18 with an adult, with a police officer, at a training thing, anything. Criminal activities, ladies and gentlemen. And there they are, and it's up on Infowars.com. And, Mike, maybe we should put the phone numbers and fax numbers back up for Juan Hinojosa, Jim Dunham, Domingo Garcia, Ann Kitchen, Terry Martinez, those on the committee. Five of them are going to vote for this next week, they're saying. You better stop them. You better get in their face. You better let them know you're going to run against them. You're going to get out there and put up signs. You're going to watch downtown because the election fraud we've proven. It's been in the Statesman two years ago. That county clerk stealing elections left and right for everybody. We're in deep trouble, folks. I wanted to hit on one other piece of news before I get to the concentration camp news. And HEB planning to put thumb scanners in in all of Texas to buy food. Already has happened in Houston, Texas. Same with Kroger. I warned you years ago, and now here it is from the Austin Business Journal. <clears throat> this was in Sunday, Statesman. Disarming argument. Now, again, I'm not going to read them out of the paper because I have to flip around. It's unwieldy. You can, it's the same article that was in the Statesman Sunday. In fact, here that is. Give them a close shot of that. Life and Arts right there. You go and you can read it, but uh, here's the online version. It's Disarming Argument by Clint Richmond. And it goes into John Sugarman points to his book link criticism of America's handgun culture at this state in every handgun is aimed at you. And this is like shades of Ben Sargent writing that story last year saying there was never an individual right to own guns, there is no second amendment, and it's not to throw off a tyrannical government or to defend you from criminals. If you read the Federalist Papers, if you read the second amendment, Sergeant, the question is, Are you not insulted by these lies? Well, they go into saying that guns don't make us safe, which is just a ball-faced lie. The common sense, the numbers, the facts are out. Washington, D.C., total gun ban, highest crime rate in the country. England bans all guns, 44% increase in violent crime. That's all on Infowars.com, mainstream news articles. And he says four times in this story, we need to ban all handguns now. John Sugarman points to his book link criticism of American handgun culture and at this state, and every handgun is aimed at you. Even the Texas legislature, current of uh, efforts to make handgun purchases more restrictive, would likely be deemed as a waste of time by Sugarman. Texas is the state most associated with gun ownership, the author says, with a disproportionate share of 65 million handguns held by Americans. He estimates that 45% of all Texan households contain a gun. Nearly 30% have a handgun. In New York State, with its stricter gun laws, only 11% of households contain handguns. He proceeds to demonstrate that regions with high handgun ownership suffer the highest rates of homicide, suicide, and accidental death. Now, all you've got to do is go to the FBI's own database online or John Lott at Yale or any numbers, the actual numbers of deaths from guns, 
New York's like three times worse than Texas. But he just they say here that's not true. In 1998, out of 100,000 people in Washington, D.C., there were 69 homicides and gun deaths. Take per 100,000 in Indianapolis, Indiana, with strong Second Amendment. There were six deaths. I mean, you, you just, that's the actual numbers. But they just lie in the paper. And uh, it continues to say that it, handguns cause violence against women, youth, elderly, and minorities. Playing the race card. Now, having a gun means you're a racist. Oh, don't you love it? Hitler was for gun control. Just want to remind you that. See, the ruling class wants you disarmed. It continues, Sugarman is unapologetic about his lack of, ob of, of objectivity. I'm so angry here. As executive director of the Violence Policy Center, an organization dedicated to reducing gun deaths, nothing less should be expected. He has related anti-violence advocacy position, including the National Coalition to Ban Handguns. Every handgun is a call to arms to rally troops for banning handguns, and Sugarman provides all the ammo a vocal volunteer needs for the debate. What, to get up there and spout lies? It's a lie. It's not my opinion. It's a lie. Sugarman surprisingly doesn't support... Uh, and then it continues, and so the reader, after fighting through the withering anti-gun data, is left to wonder, to what end is Sugarman just firing blanks? He concludes that no progress in abolishing handguns in America is likely until the present generation of adults dies off. Without much supporting data, and despite the recent rash of school shootings, school shootings are way down. They just publicize them more now. By teen, Sugarman predicts the happy memories of aging gun owners have little relevance to 21st century youths who view the issue far differently than do their gun-loving elders. Our nation will eventually ban handguns. Charlton Heston, loyal opposition, by the way, selling out gun owners, president of National Rifle Association, challenged anyone to take away his gun, defiantly raising his musket at the last NRA convention and shouting from my cold, dead hand. If Sugarman is correct, America's handgun proliferation is mainly a generational problem. Perhaps Heston's outcry was more of a prophecy than a dare. So they're in there talking about people dying. We're going to get your guns. Folks, that's a lie. So now you're a racist if you want guns. You're old. You're backward. The trendy thing to do is to turn your guns in. Now to the real news, ladies and gentlemen. We, we tape each hour, and this hour is almost over, so I'm trying to speed up here. Austin Business Journal, biometric section of Infowars.com. Last little paragraph here. Many of biometric access systems are used for computer security, Jennings says, but some companies are moving toward point-of-sale systems for authorizing checks, credit cards, and debit cards. Biometric access is conducting pilot point-of-sale projects at Kroger and HEB stores in the Houston area. That was reported on Fox News last week. They plan to go nationwide with it. I also have my story here about civilian inmate labor camps. Americans are now in 12 concentration camps and that's in the police state section of infowars.com and you can actually go to the site and read the camps and where the forced labor is going on the same film I gave the committee that they wanted to laugh at that they thought was funny and uh, coming up the next hour I guess we'll make this a two hour special because I want people to see this uh, I will get to that actual uh, document for you Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Jones. This is InfoWars. For more information, it's all documented, InfoWars.com. Stay with us. All right, that's it for that hour, right, Mike? Go ahead and start another tape, brother. Here it is. I found it. I mean, it's just incredible the amount of news I've got here. Give me a close shot. I want to talk to the listeners out there. Civilian inmate labor camp, ladies and gentlemen. Do we have that in the CG? Because what we can do is we can um, put up the actual web address to the U.S. Army website. Would you like to do that, kids? www.hqda.army.mil forward slash ACSIM forward slash ops I-N-M-A-T-E-B-G dot H-T-M.
And it is unbelievable. There it is. Let's just leave that up for about five minutes into this next hour. Do we have the next tape running yet? Ten seconds and we'll be live. Let me, let me do this for, for later when you're watching. This is a tape. You'll get to laugh at this. Uh, we do this here, and these tapes go around the country as well. All right, we're back live with hour number two of this special two-hour broadcast. I used to turn the show in as hour tapes, and now we've got to the point where we just can't break these shows up. I can't mention concentration camps to you without putting the Army's website for you to face the facts. I can't do that, and I can't do it without reading it to you for those that aren't online, can I? So we'll get to that coming up. Uh, right now, I want to go ahead and go to some video. This is Mike Hansen. <clears throat> at the Austin airport last week, out driving around, saw him pulling over hundreds of truck drivers, harassing them, demanding tribute. Oh, oh yeah, Austin Police Department billboard. All right, well, we'll get to that a little bit in a, in a few minutes, Mike. I need to talk about this airport first now. That's the order you gave him to me in. And they told Mike to that he couldn't videotape off of a public road. This is what the cops have gotten to. This is the point they're at. These young cops think you're not allowed to aim a video camera at them. We're in a police state. Are the cops bad? No. They're just like the general public, ignorant morons who don't know the basics about their country, about their history, or about freedom. And they're being told that there's no limits if they become police, that they can do anything they want, basically now that everything's up to their discretion. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put that up, Mike, first, since you want to do that. <laughs> okay, you told me to go to that. What would you like to air? Okay, we're going to the airport. Awesome. While we're at that, let's just put the camps back up for them in case people were lazy and laughed. And Now, there you go. Would you like to learn about concentration camps? How am I supposed to act when I talk about this stuff? I mean, am I supposed to just calmly sit here like nothing's wrong? Let me just read this calmly and talk about this for you. That's why I recommend my radio show that's on from 9 to midnight every night, censored in Austin. You can only hear the international broadcast via Infowars.com. If you're in New York, you can hear it on the FM and AM dial. But because uh, I'm very calm, it's just me in a nice cold studio, you know, there with my glass of water, covering the news, thinking about it. I don't have these cameras. and uh, I turn into like Dr. Jekyll or something on Access TV. Because I just want you to understand how serious this is. We'll get to the camps here in a few minutes. First, this is the airport. Are we ready to go to that, Mike? Well, this is a couple minutes. Can you just talk over? Okay, I'll talk. You need to come over to the mics, bud, if you want people to hear you. It's I was 200 feet away at least videotaping and I just want people to know I didn't intimidate them or bother them at first I just want to play and you weren't on airport property you were out by the road uh, off the main parking lot well they made it public property by pulling over these trucks yeah like they did HEB that time it was a parking lot off of airport right by the fire station yeah that's public property Mike yeah. you're allowed to take video there it's and not I'm some gonna secret I'm gonna stop it okay you'll see the men go over and tell the the people that I'm there and you'll see it here in just a minute he'll go over and tell him and then that's when they send Okay, the do me a favor. Let me call for the pieces of tape first so I can promo them. All right, go ahead. Because it's just going to be incoherent if we don't do that. Uh, thank you. Uh, here's Mike, uh, right-wing evil, getting video of police. Police will reach in and break uh, the brake lines and then give you a $500 ticket, something they like to do to Jimmy Ritter's reported on this. We went out and interviewed folks and covered it. And uh, this is their activities. This is what they're up to. This is what they're doing. There's the black combat boots of the secret police. Incidentally, in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, they have openly created a secret police unit with $10 million funding a year that no one can question or investigate. So they're publicly creating secret police units with the feds. There he goes to go tell on Mike, stares at Mike, and goes over to one of the other um, officers, airport police, when Mike isn't even on airport property. Um, he's out there in a the parking lot near the, one of the gates. To tattle, this older officer doesn't understand the First Amendment. He, he thinks he lives in Mexico or Russia. Maybe he should move there. And he'll love to confiscate your guns. In fact, he's trying to do it right now. We have this on tape as well. And now they're about to come over. Uh, go ahead and fade the audio up, Mike. And we'll be right back.
turn what off? Camera. Turn the camera off. I don't have to turn the camera off. I, I'm part of the. I'm part of media. You want to see my? You want to see my pass? Yeah, you have one. Yeah, sure, dude. You can't tell me to turn a camera off in a public place. Listen, the lady, Donnie, just get it out of my. You face. can't tell. Donnie, you cannot tell me. Face. You better get. You better get your sergeant over here. You need to get it out of my face. You better face. get your sergeant. You cannot Listen. tell me in a public place to do this. I don't know what. I don't know what you're talking you can't about. Work. The lady yes, I can talk. I can. Let me finish. Okay, the lady that's in charge of this project out here. Mm -hmm. Listen, watch you out here filming. Them okay, well, I'll move here. my van off and get on the street then. How about that? Up to you. Okay, but you cannot tell me to turn off the camera. Uh, well, I'm telling you what this. I'll show you some ID if you want. Wants from out here. City manager wants you me to cut some, the camera off. I know all of them. A manager for the city. Do you have some ID? Yeah, sure do. Can I see it? Sure do. But you cannot tell me to turn off the camera. Oh, I'm asking. Do you have the ID with you? Uh, you need to get your. You need to get one of these. Uh, super, I'm yeah. asking you for a supervisor. They're are you? Line. Are you denying me a supervisor? They, are no. you denying me a supervisor? I know my brother's a cop. You cannot. You cannot intimidate me. I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm just telling you what I'm being told. So by you're the All right, folks. Now look at this. Mike is on a parking lot outside the airport by one of the main gates. They're pulling over hundreds of truck drivers, dump truck drivers out there working their butts off, and they just give them tickets for nothing and harass them for hours. They, they do it every day. It's one of the most profitable things the APD does. They're shameful. This is how they make their money, harassing commerce. And it goes right into the cost of your house. Right in the cost of gravel, right in the cost of everything. So one of these older punk officers, and that's what they are, they're gang member punks, vatos, uh, goes over and complains to this guy, and he comes over going, turn it off. He's so used to people licking his boots. Oh, you're wearing a uniform. I don't have any rights. Yes, sir. Can I lick your boots a little better? And then he jumps out and gets in Mike's face and runs over and tells Mike, and starts touching the camera and batting at the camera. I mean, who do you think you are, buddy? You're a criminal. That's criminal. If you went up to some cop with a video camera and they got them all the time and swatted their camera, boy, they'd blow your butt away. They just beat up some old 74-year-old man in L.A. today who was using sign language to him when they pulled him over. They taught that bastard. Excuse me, I apologize. They taught that old man. He'll learn next time. Oh man, you gonna make a hand sign at me? Ugh. God, you just hey, turn the camera back on in there. It, oh man, you piece of filth! I got power, boy! I got power! Ah! You don't ever, ever, ever use sign language with me. So, I mean, what's wrong with you, police? Who do you think you are? I don't use the drugs your bosses bring into Austin. I don't drink anymore. I used to drink a few beers here and there. I don't uh, even go to your filthy 6th Street where you hit on women and harass people. You better stay away from me and my family. You make me angry. That is what they do in Mexico, in Russia. General Drago here. Turn your camera off. Turn your turn your camera off. You do, da da. What are we? Yes. Need to see your papers. Turn the camera off here in Nazi Germany. <sighs> Mike, I want you to rewind this tape and show this cop over there. Oh, some manager's a lordship. Hi, Hold on. A lordship wants you to turn your camera off. A lordship. And so the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, I don't know what those are, but just, you just turn your camera off. You just, you just, you just, we're going to thumb scan you at HEB to get your food. <laughs> and we're going to put microphones up in Austin and cameras, but turn your camera off. Turn it off. Yeah, yeah. Move to Mexico, buddy. They lo they'd love a cop like you down there. Let's go back to the tape. Rewind on the Turn the camera off. I don't have to turn the camera off. I, I'm part of the. I'm part of media. You want to see my? You want to see my pass? Yeah, you have one. Yeah, sure, dude. You can't tell me to turn the camera off in a public place. 
I love Mike Hansen archives. Hello, folks. I'm sorry to interrupt your viewing here on classic Alex Jones or Jeff Davis or Steve Lane or George Humphrey here on be sure to uh, subscribe to Mike Hansen archives Hansen archives which is our newest one and our newest newest one is Waco archives anything we've done with Waco we're gonna put on there separately but Mike Hansen archives on YouTube and uh, Hansen archives and we're busy putting up all these old shows. Uh, there's one of, uh, I don't know what they're doing there. I guess they're, <laughs> that's when barcodes just come out. They were complaining about it. There's Alex. Uh, and there's, we just got through with this one over here. Alex and Steve on the Freedom Report. She went, we have a editor over here and she's letting it render now. But, uh, that's what we're doing here uh, on these channels. We're putting up 25-year-old shows uh, from Alex Jones and uh, Jeff Davis. Uh, I was both their producers from 1995 uh, all the way up to 2010. And it's probably 60 or 70 people doing what I used to do in, in Alex's office now. But... Uh, if you would like to help us fund this project, uh, write us here at uh, 901 St. Joseph's, Gonzales, Texas. Uh, uh, send us $25 and I'll send you a signed copy of my book, Bohemia Grove cult of conspiracy when Alex Jones and I snuck into the Bohemia Grove back in the year 2000. There's, let me move my fly swatter out of the way. There is uh, Alex and I when we were younger. Okay. <clears throat> we'll get you back to uh, watching the good classics here on, uh, what is that, Alex being arrested? Uh, but we got hundreds and hundreds of tapes to do. We got to transfer them over to, uh, from VHS over to the computer. There's Jeff Davis. All right, well, give, uh, give us a call if you'd like to put it on a credit card at 830-672-3089. If you would like to write us, we're at 901 St. Joseph Street in Gonzales, Texas. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and let, let all your friends know about all these old shows we're putting up. They haven't been seen in 25 years. Thanks a lot and God bless.